Today, we are going to be talking about some of the dumbest scientific theories that have been proposed, and why they sucked. Starting off with planned communism, theorised by a Russian scientist by the name of Lysenko. He lived in the USSR at the time, which is where I'm guessing he got the inspiration for his theory. Lysenko rejected the idea of natural selection and Mendelian genetics in favour of his own agricultural techniques based on communist theory and the idea of vernalization, which is just conditioning. He believed that he could increase wheat seeds' crop yield by subjecting them to conditioning, exposing them to high humidities and low temperatures. According to this theory, if you put your balls in a vice, then your children would have extreme resistance to pressure and would be superhumans. So it's not really surprising that his ideas never really took off. Or is that just what they want you to think? Do not put your balls in a vice. He expanded on this theory, stating that the concept of the gene is a bourgeoisie invention, that there were no clearly defined species, and that you can change your nature exclusively by conditioning your environment. He also refuted the idea of random mutation, claiming it was the enemy of science. Big Gene is brainwashing the youth just to sell more DNA testing kits. What? Lysenko's theories were popular in the USSR, and critics of the theory were seen as criticising the Communist Party by proxy, so were disappeared by Stalin. The effects of this disastrous theory were that crop yields declined as a result, and many blame Lysenko for extending the famines that plagued the USSR, in turn needlessly killing millions of civilians. Name something more iconic than a communist idea and famines. They go together like two peas in a pod, except there are no peas because everyone is starving. Writers of the time stated that the effect Lysenko had on Russian biology was setting it back by at least 50 years. The next botched theory is that of spontaneous generation which is the opposite of spontaneous combustion. It was put forth by Aristotle. Yeah, that Aristotle, the same Greek scientist famous for creating the scientific method that creatures can be created from inanimate objects, such as how maggots grow from rotting meat. Obviously, I'll cut Aristotle some slack because he was born about 2,300 years ago. So logically, when you see rotting meat spawn maggots from nowhere, you just assume they randomly came into being. The theory was further proven by an experiment in which you would put a sweaty t-shirt, it had to be sweaty for some reason, in a jar with wheat husks. Within a few days, the jar would have spontaneously generated some mice, and people were like, yeah, see that? It's proof. The experiment was later debunked, as the mice just wandered into the jar, as mice do. In the case of the maggots, and how they were created, here's a short informational bit. Although not as bad as the communist plants idea, the thought that 1 plus 0 could ever be greater than 1 will always be dumb. The water fluoridation theory, or should I say conspiracy theory, caused a massive scare in the 1950s during McCarthyism, where the belief was that the fluoridation in the water was responsible for the decrease in reading and writing levels amongst children in the US. If you look at reading levels in the US today, maybe it wasn't so much of a conspiracy after all. Nevertheless, at the time, it was even regarded as a greater threat to Americans than the atomic bomb as it could easily and discreetly be added to the water lines, and none would be the wiser. The extent to which this was believed was quite widespread, as in Florida, fluoride introduction was rejected from thousands of communities due to these fears. Which, I mean, yeah, it's Florida, what did we expect? Towards the end of the 20th century, the theory was changed from decreasing intelligence to decreasing resistance to outside influence and allowing for people to be mind controlled. The fluoride causes calcification of the pineal gland, which is where melatonin is secreted, as well as regulating the sleep cycle. 
That last part is actually true, by the way, and it's why it's banned in the European Union. Nevertheless, our boys across the pond aren't more easily influenced and aren't prone to conspiracies. So we should be fine. Hopefully. Finally, our last theory is more of a fun one to end things on. And it's the idea that the entire human consciousness and experience was due to a brain forming in space in one instant, creating all those memories and then instantly disappearing in the next instant. Got that? No? Okay, I'll slow it down just a bit. The idea is known as the Boltzmann brain. It proposes that gases in space formed a brain in the void in an instant, and in that brain, every human conscious and action was already preloaded, and this is what we are experiencing now. The idea shares the same concept as the Big Bang, and some say even has more credence than the Big Bang theory, as both came from nothing, but because the human experience was in the brain, any laws of the universe or natural forces can assume to be perfect, whereas in the Big Bang theory, if the forces of gravity were any stronger or weaker, formation of the universe would not be possible. So next time someone tells you not to put your balls in a vice, tell them that they're just part of the brain in the void, and they can't tell you what to do. Thanks for watching. If you like these types of videos, consider subscribing or liking the video. Anyway, hope to see you in the next one. Bye.